Yo, what's good on today's video? You know, had to had to had to hit you guys back with the back to back the strongest battlegrounds videos. You guys love this type of content. I got the how to make a counter skill. You guys know in the strongest battlegrounds or battlegrounds game, whatever the case. Well, not even battleground games, but just generally fighting games. I know. Um, how you have like, this type of counter abilities, like you um, like your character kind of you can't move. You can't move to like a kind of defensive stance and then if like any player tries to attack you within a certain amount of time then no damage like you won't you won't get damaged at all and you will and you will you know counter attack like you'll damage them instead kind of like an iframe is moving in a sense so yeah i got you that video i got that got y'all with that video and stuff uh thank you guys for the three th the damn i can't talk shit today <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys for 3,000 subscribers. Really do appreciate it. I really love all the love we have been showing. It really appreciate y'all been dropping hella comments and stuff. I really appreciate all the thank yous and thank you for helping me learn the content and like great content, all the comments. I love all of that. I really do appreciate each and every one of you know stuff. But anyway, let's go ahead and get straight to the video. Okay, so first things first, you guys already know we need ourselves a remote event. Let's head on over to replicated storage and insert a remote event. Okay, there's not a remote event. Just uh, delete that and let's insert a remote event. If you don't see remote event, simply type in remote event. Then we're going to rename this remote event to combat event. That's not useful combat event. Okay. Right. Then inside of service script service, we're going to put our animations. Okay. So to insert animation, just like we did the remote event, type in animation, right? You want to name each animation, whatever names you want, just make sure you change it on the script. So I have four animations. The reason I have four animations is for demonstration purposes. So when we have the counter animation, so it takes one of the difference. The counter animation, this is like the kind of uppercut punch. Like this is like what the player will literally play. This is the counter attack animation. This is the counter idle animation. Like when the player is just taking a defensive stance and they're waiting for for another player or NPC, whatever, to attack them. Then you have the knockback animation and the M1 animation. These two assemblies for demonstration pur demonstration purposes. So I can show you guys how it works for like if I'm in um if I'm another player and I try to attack my and I try to attack a player taking the defensive stance, then I won't take any damage and uh, the player trying to attack me will the player trying to attack will pretty much get knocked back and stuff. Then the M1 animation, of course, just a general M1 animation, right? So then throw your animation ID in there, it'll autofill, make sure you name it, like I said, throw them in service script service. We're going to come back to put all the animations into a server script, but we'll come back through that. Then you need your sounds. Um I have the DBZ punch sound. This and then a kick sound literally go to the toolbox go to audio type punch kick whatever find whatever you want and throw it into sound service and boom it's like that we can go ahead and get started so let me go ahead and insert a local script into starter player scripts let me insert a local script and then i'm going to name the script combat script in parentheses put local also good news this video honestly maybe like 15 minutes like it really won't be long because the local script barely anything server scripts like 70 lines it's really not that long but anyway, first we're gonna need two variables. First, let's get the user input service. So local UI yes to get the game, get service, user input service. Then let's get the combat remote event. So local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage, wait for child, combat event. Then let's set up the user input service function. So UI yes, the input began, connect function, in parentheses put input, comma processed. Enter. Then I'm gonna say if input that user input type is equal to enum that user input type dot keyboard and process is equal to false remember process because false that uh ensures that the player is not typing in chat they're just pressing the key regularly then if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot e you guys can choose whatever key code you want then combat event fire server in quotation marks we're going to put counter right now if you have if you have different types of counters then obviously you want to specify which counter it is counter one counter two or upper kick counter kick counter or whatever then we're going to add an else if statement but make sure you pay very close attention here so you want to go to the first if statement right and then you want to go like right here enter then you're going to do else if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one and uh oh, wait well, need process but anyway well actually is that mean you're no nah, no nah, you should be good you should be good but I guess just for safe, just for safe measure, just do proxy equals false. But anyway, so this is for the M1 and stuff. This is now this is optional. The reason why I included M1, I included a basic M1 thing. Like I didn't literally script like a whole damage and all that stuff. I literally just did it so like if you left click your mouse, then play a punch animation. I did that so I could just demonstrate to you guys how, like how okay you try to punch somebody, you 
then you get attacked and stuff. So yeah. So I'm gonna say combat event fire serve wrinkle quotation marks. I'm gonna put M1. All right. And then just like that, guys. Like I said, we are done with the local script. Then we can move on to the server script. Let's insert a server script into server script service. Like I said, let's throw all four of those animations into the script. Then name the script combat script and parentheses put server. Let me double check. Okay, I'm good. Okay, so I'm gonna delete print hello world. Then we're gonna make four variables. First things first, we need the debris service. So local ds equals to game. Get service debris. Then let's get the sound service. SS is equal to game. Get service. Sound service. Then I'm going to get the combat remote event, just like I did on the local script. So game to replicate a storage, wait for child combat event. And lastly, I'm going to make a table that we can add player's name to it so we know that they're able to attack. So players don't get double hit. So local can attack is equal to special bracket. That's how we create a table. Then I'm gonna make we're gonna need two functions. The first function is when a player joins, we're gonna create a string value named combat status. Here's how we're gonna check the player's combat status. So pretty much if um if a player comes into contact with the with the player who's uh in the counterattack stance, we'll say, right? Like their status is counter, right? If they come into contact with them and their status is attacking, it's then going to play the counterattack. That's how this works. So we're gonna say game that players that player added connect function in parentheses put player which is I mean, plr which is short for player then enter we're going to create the combat status value we're going to say combat status is equal to instance dot new we're going to make it a string value then parent it to the player and then we're going to say combat no, sorry not combat event combat status dot name same as same as we wrote on the script combat status then you're going to set the default value equal to not attacking right or neutral, whatever you really want. But just again, if you change anything, it's your responsibility to change it on the script. Then setting up the second and final function. We're gonna say combat event that on server events connect function in parentheses put PLR to show for the player, comma, and event type. So we can differentiate between each type. Then I'm gonna create a variable for the player's character. Local character is equal to player dot character. Then set up an if statement if event type is equal to counter, just like I said on the local script. Then I'm gonna insert the player's name into the table to the insert can attack player dot name. Um, I would recommend doing player dot name. You could also do character dot name, but the reason for that is because we're going to also make a variable for the enemy character. I don't want you guys getting confused on which character is which, so I would recommend just going with the player's name. Okay. Then I'm going to set some value. I'm going to change the player's combat status so player dot this one autofill, so make sure you type it correctly. Combat status dot value is equal to counter, right? Then I'm going to, of course, make it so that the player can't walk or jump anymore. So player main character dot humanoid dot walk speed equal to zero. Character dot humanoid dot jump power is equal to zero. Then we're gonna set it back to regular after we're done, and then we're gonna play the animation track. So, or the first one, I should say. So, local AT is equal to instance dot. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know what the hell is going through my head. We're gonna, so, we're gonna do character that humanoid load animation, right? And then we're gonna say script, regular brackets, quotation marks. Then remember, we're playing the counter idle animation. This is the initial animation. This is like we're waiting for someone to attack us. So, AT play, right? Then I'm going to set up the for i loop. I'm going to say for i b in pairs. I'm going to say character get children enter. Do if v is a mesh part, looking out for um you know r six and r six and r fifteen. So if v is a mesh part or v is a regular part. Then the belong if statement. I'm going to say if hit oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Then set up the v dot touch connect function. I will skip the whole step. Then put hit in uh, parentheses, right? And I'm gonna say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid, which means it's either an NPC or a player. By the way, the system only works on players. Just to let you guys know, you'd have to test it. So you can't test it, which is like a dummy and stuff. So that ensures that they have humanoid and game dot players find first child. Then hit dot parent dot name, right? Now on the outside, we're gonna say dot 
combat status that value is equal to attack so then that means you can counter attack and of course table dot find can attack the player name need to ensure that the player is able to attack once we've confirmed that we can then remove the name from the table so can attack table dot find can attack player dot name boom we remove the name from the table and then we're going to set the player's combat status so player dot combat status or you can really set you can wait this up at the end but yeah so combat status is equal to I guess it would more so make it make sense to really set this at the end of the attack. That would more so make sense. Or nah, nah, let's set it like this. Let's do not attacking. But you could also set it at the end of the attack. It it really is kind of up to you and stuff for how your stuff works. Then I'm gonna stop playing the animation because they're no longer they're no longer waiting for someone to attack them. And then I'm gonna set up the second animation track. Let's copy and paste to save ourselves some time. Control C, Control V, A. A2, AT2, AT2. Then, of course, we're going to change this to the instead of counter idle, changing this to counter animation. Then just double check that you spelled everything right. Boom, counter animation. Then, moving on, we're going to create a variable for the player's enemy character. So, enemy character is equal to hit that parent. We've confirmed it. It is, in fact, a enemy player. Now, to add the knockback and ragdoll. So, I'm gonna say local attachment. You guys are in another drill. Local attach. I feel like I'm spelling this wrong. I am. Attach. Atta I must not know how to spell. Local attachment is equal to instance dot new attachment parent to the character's humanoid root part. Right. Then I'm going to create a linear velocity. This dot new linear velocity. Parent this to the attachment. Then let's set some properties. Linear velocity. We're gonna say linear velocity dot max force is equal to five nines, right? Then I'm gonna set the vector velocity. So linear velocity dot vector velocity. Now this is a lot. This is this this is the last time that it should be really a lot though. So in parentheses I'm gonna say character dot humanoid root part dot position minus enemy character dot humanoid root part same thing. That position go on the outside of the parentheses then you're gonna say dot unit times vector three dot new and you're gonna say zero comma zero uh and then negative 40. that's what i want with you guys can make the number higher you, you can increase it decrease whatever you want and then i'm gonna say linear velocity dot attachment zero is equal to attachment and then moving on i'm gonna say enemy character that human root part just in case we're gonna say that anchored is equal to false. There's space right there. This looks better. Then I'm going to say enemy character. That human root part. Dot C frame is times equal to C frame dot angles. I'm gonna say math dot rad short for radians. 180 degrees comma zero comma zero. Then moving on from there, I'm going to set up the third animation track. So I'm gonna just paste what I already had copied. So control V. And change this to three, you know, just so we can do, differentiate between everything. Now, with this, instead of the regular character, we want the enemy character now. And then this is the knockback animation, I believe. Yes, the knockback animation. Then we're going to use the debris service. So DS add item attachment. Wait 0 0.1 seconds before destroying it. Then I'm going to set the players. Uh, that's back to normal. So control C. You can also make it so that the enemy character can't walk either. Like they can't move at all either. So set it to whatever your game's defaults are. Not me do that. Set it to whatever your game's defaults are. So 16 and 51 for me. All right. Then we are almost done. We're, we want to go on the outside of this. We want to go on the outside of this for a loop. So say if the player used the counter ability, but nobody touched them. Like within a span of like however long you want. Let's say task that wait five seconds, but it can be however long you want. So after five seconds of waiting, no one is tried to attack the player. Okay, we need to we need to remove their name from we need to remove their name from the table if we find their name and we need to stop them stop the animation playing and allow them to walk again. So I'm gonna simply say if table dot find can attack player dot name. I'm gonna save us all some time here. So we find the name in the table. Let's go find the table dot remove. Control C, Control V. Remove the name from the table. We're gonna set all their stats back to normal. So control V. And then we're also gonna set the combat status. So control C. 
and then control V, right? Set their status back to normal with the name from the table and set their walk speed and jump power back to normal. And guys, we have like about five more lines left to go and then we are done. Like I said, this is honestly very short. So this is just setting up the uh, M1 so you could just test this. So it's kind of optional. Plus if event type is equal to M1, enter. Then uh, pretty much same thing. Copy and uh, kind of, I guess you can copy and paste this. So control C, yeah, control C all that. Control V. Then we can go ahead and really delete. You can really delete all of that. You don't need that. So for this, uh, you can just leave AT since it's a whole different event, so it doesn't really matter. So in, so instead for this, it is attacking, setting our status to attacking, and then this is just the M1 animation, AT play. And then of course, when AT dot ended connect function when the player has finished attacking then we're setting their status back to not that so control c control v and boom we just double check oh, okay i'm good so yeah just like that we are done so yeah as always if you guys want access to the script or model this script or model and any of my other scripts and models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of the options can be found in the description and yeah let's go ahead into okay i just realized i forgot that i need to test it in actual things so i'll go ahead and set that up real quick but yeah, like I said, if you guys want to uh, access to any of my scripts or models for any of my videos, just become a channel member or a Discord subscriber. You guys should definitely join the Discord server. I'm like two members away from a thousand members, but obviously by the time you guys watch this video, I'm at a, I'm at a thousand plus members. You guys should for sure join. People will be talking to every day. I'll be uh, making announcements regarding changes to my channel, uh, clips, clips about things I'm working on. I'll be getting opinions from them. Like I do polls on YouTube, but I also be getting opinions from like uh, people on my server and stuff. So you guys should definitely join. Link to both that and a Roblox group can be found in the description. So you guys could definitely go check that out. Okay. All right. Now we can test. Okay. By the way, my animations were for R6, but you, you have to use your own animation anyway. But anyway, let's go ahead and test this. Okay. So if I press E, you guys see I'm in a blocking stance, right? I have to go quick. Then five. Boom. Okay. Well, that did not. See, and this is why I test. C frame is not a valid member of humanoid. Oops. Let me carry that Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Mm. See, see. Oh, I, mm, I get it now. I get it now. But that shouldn't wait. Oh, I see. See, and this is why testing is important. I would have left you guys. I would have left you guys with the wrong thing. Okay, so I actually made some mistakes here. So first things first. I'm used to I'm used to used to it being character. So it's not character. That's that's actually my fault. It's not character. We're pairing it to the enemy character. Because remember, you're parent, you're pairing, parenting it to to um you know the part of the uh character that you want to actually be affected by the knockback. Obviously, you wouldn't want the character to be knocked back. You want the enemy character. Then of course, the knockback was kind of infinite because it wasn't getting past this line since I did enemy character dot humanoid dot c frame. Which obviously that's not how that works. It is humanoid root part dot c frame. Okay, there we go. Now let me go ahead and test this and stuff. And this is why this is why I always test my stuff for you guys because just you know I get I get testing wrong. But let's go ahead and see. And after this video, I plan to go work on. I guess I'll just let you guys know. I plan to go work on the laps like a laps blue thing. It's gonna be similar to the thing I made with the infinity, like just like a, just a concept that I just came up with myself. Or just like a simple little probably tweened effect around me. I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out. But anyway, okay. So let's test, let's try this now. Okay, blocking stance. Switch over to the other player. If I boom. Okay, there we go. So I was uppercut. Yeah, you guys see. I'll do it again. So boom and switch and uppercut. Boom, countered stuff. Boom. Now obviously no damage is happening because obviously. Oh damn! Actually, I did forget to put damage. I'm not gonna lie. Oh well, I just did forget to put damage. Um. Okay, so you can just throw that in somewhere, uh, like right here. Yeah, I'd say like right here. You can throw it in. You could just say enemy character, not humanoid. You can say like take damage uh, ten. Yeah, you can just throw some damage in at the end here. But anyway, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, for sure leave a like and for sure leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. And thank you guys for watching. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.